What is going on trading world? Welcome back to another video. I am super excited to make this video because I truly believe that this video is going to have an impact on your trading. Now, let me ask you a question. What is one thing that is guaranteed in trading, right? Guaranteed is always going to happen. All right. Ask yourself that question. One thing that's always guaranteed in trading is that you're going to lose. All right. Winning is never guaranteed. In this video, I want to share with you guys the Forex sentiment tool and how I use it to gauge what retail traders are doing and how I can use that to my advantage. So basically what the Forex sentiment tool does is it allows you to know what majority of retail traders are doing okay if majority of retail traders are going long or if they're going short now can you guess why I would want to know what majority of the people are doing like, why would I want to know what 95% of people are doing on a certain pair because majority of those people are gonna lose money so if 95% of traders lose money and I can actually see what they're doing I can use that to my advantage by doing two things okay if majority of the people are going short I can do one thing I can either not go short or I can go the other way and try to find a long. Remember when the markets move, they grab liquidity. Our job is to not be part of that liquidity. Okay. We basically by not being part of liquidity, we are attempting to not get our stop losses hit. How we can do that is by using this tool. So let's jump on into my computer and I'll show you guys how to What's use it. What's going on everybody. We are in my computer. I want to make this video as helpful as possible. So I've divided up into sections. Um, and it, you know, the way I have it in my head, it makes sense to me and the way I've taught it, it makes sense to other people. Uh, but because me and you may not trade the same way, um, I want to teach it to you in a way where, you know, um, you know, you can make it your own, uh, especially when you learn something new, you should always try it yourself uh, and try to make it your own. But I want to break it up into four different sections. Okay. Um, but before we go into that, I just want to talk about like what the Forex sentiment, you know, how I, I know about it. So I've known about it since 2019. I've been using it mainly since the last six months. I did introduce a little section of it in my course. I think a little bit of it, but I did didn't really uh, bring too much attention to it. I am doing a whole video that I will be introducing into my course. But if you are in my discord, you know that I've been preaching about the Forex sentiment like crazy. Uh, in the last three months, I've used it a lot. In the last one month in January, I've passed two challenges and I literally passed them uh, with the majority of the, the help coming from Forex sentiment and just my supply and demand strategy in conjunction with this. And so we're going to look at how, you know, how all of that can come together, how you can use this to your advantage. And yeah, man, uh, if you get Get any value out of this video please hit the like button and subscribe to the channel i got some crazy videos i'm working on that i'm going to be bringing to this channel for 2022 just providing insane amounts of value um any way that I can. So with that being said, also, if you are starting a challenge, there should be a link in the description where you can get 12% off on the funded trader program. Now let's get into the video, man. All right. There's four points. I'll probably narrate them on the screen and you know, we'll, we'll talk about, um, sorry, google.com. Okay. We'll talk about, uh, what those four points are. Okay. Uh, so number one, we're going to start with how does the Forex sentiment work? That's number one. All right. How does the Forex uh, sentiment work? Right. Number two is how, what, like, how can I use the Forex sentiment with my strategy when it's an, at an area of interest? So like a, a, it could be like your support and resistance zone, your order block or your supply and demand zone. Like my point of interest, when my trade is at my point of interest, how can I use the Forex sentiment to guide me into, you know, not letting my stop loss get hit or, you know, not take a trade or take a trade in the correct direction. That's going to be like the main thing. Number two that we're going to discuss. You're going to want to come back and rewatch that part. Uh, and then number three is going to be what percentage of the sentiment actually makes makes a big enough impact that I need to be concerned. Again, I'll talk about that uh, and you know, you'll understand that in more depth as we go along in the video. Number four will be how to enter the trade even if we are trading with majority of the retail traders. So um, we're going to dig deep into number four when we get there so that means like if a majority of traders are short and we want to go short because it matches our strategy how can we still do it without getting taken out as liquidity so why do we use the forex sentiment right it's because majority of people lose money in forex it's just plain and simple probably 95 percent of people lose money in trading so well it just makes sense to not do what 90 80 percent of people are doing but we can't just kind of do just the opposite right we have to put other things together put put clues together um, because we also have to look at risk to rewards and things like that. So how do you find the Forex sentiment? You can just Google Forex sentiment and it's probably going to be the second one. It's under myfxbook.com. Click it, save it to your favorites, man. I have it saved right here and I use it on a daily basis. I'm telling you, I passed two challenges this month. One that I just posted on my Instagram, the prop trading one was literally, um, you know, I literally use the help of the Forex sentiment in conjunction with my supply and demand strategy. Um, 
And yeah, so how the for you to understand how the forex sentiment works, you need to understand how my FX book works. And it's probably a better idea if you Google or YouTube this so you have a better understanding. But basically, my FX book is a platform where, uh, you know, traders can connect their live accounts uh, and they can, you know, it's like they can keep a journal of their trades. They can see how much percentage they made. Um, it's just a way to like keep track of their trading and things like that. But what it also does is it it knows what majority it knows, like what you are doing. If you have an account with my FX book, it's linked to your live broker. It knows when you're going long on GBP USD or you're going short on GBP USD. And it can give us this sentiment. It can give us the percentages of what people are doing. And there's enough traders on my FX book to give us the overall sentiment of what's actually happening in the world. Um, because, and I've seen it to be probably 90% accurate. Majority of the time, it's very accurate, okay? And we'll get into the percentages of when you should really be paying attention to it. So how it works is like, for example, okay, USD JPY, 79% of people are short on USD JPY, 21% of people are long, so almost 5,600 lots are, are short, 1,500 are long, all right? That's a way to read the sentiment. So now you know if you're trading USD JPY, which I have open here, and I and I was actually in this trade. I just exited recently, just because cons in taking into consider consideration these numbers were not dropping. So if 80% of people are going short on UJ, you know, do you really want to go short? We'll talk about that when we talk about the percentages and how much difference they make. But how to actually? So now we're going to come into number two. Okay, how can I use this? Uh, in conjunction with my strategy. So it could be your support and resistance, could be your, you know, smart money concepts, order blocks, supply and demand, your key area, key areas where you want to take a trade. <clears throat> How can you come here and make a better base decision? Okay. If you are trading, for example, Euro AUD, okay. And your the trade is at your key area of interest, wherever Euro AUD may be at this point in time. And uh, you know, you see something like this where it's half people are short, half people are long. There's no problem taking this trade. And that's what we're going to talk about in number three. But right now, let's look at something where majority of the retail traders are on one side of the fence and what's really going on, right? So the one that catches my eye right off the bat is right here, AUD NZD. We have 92% people short on AUD NZD and only 8% people long, okay? Now just think about that, man. Think about that for a second. What do you think is really going to happen? Another thing I'll let you guys know, this does lag about four to six, sometimes 12 hours. So, you know, if 92% of people are short and there's a big candle that spikes them out and takes them out, it's not going to reflect here right away. It takes some time. So um, that's what we're going to talk in part four. But AUD NZD, man, if you, um, once in a while, the market will throw us a bone and let you slide and let you win. But majority of the time, if you see something like this where 92% of traders are short, it means that there's a key area of interest somewhere there on the chart where majority of the traders want to take a short, okay? Another thing is majority of traders, uh, and we'll open we'll open it up, it was AUD NZD, yeah, AUD, and AUD NZD, okay? Majority of traders love trading reversals. And that's why uh, in my program, we always talk about like we don't trade reversal we're trading with a trend and preferably we're trading where majority of traders are trading with a reversal so we're going against the sentiment um, and that's just what works for me man like that's literally what works for me um so looking at AUD NZD can we figure out why everybody wants to go short right and I and I had a look at this before and I can tell why um very clear to see that there's a key area of interest right here right there okay um it was at one point for the support and resistance traders, it was a support zone, support zone. It was broken, support turned into resistance. Um, I think in smart money concepts, you could consider this an order block and 100%. This is a daily supply area as it broke major structures. So all kinds of traders want to take a short here as a reversal because it's a, you know, you could say like this is basically a, a key area okay it's a key area so this is what's triggering a lot of the retail traders to try to take a short and look at this we can see where it's at, where it happened and how people got stopped out right this was the key area where everybody wanted to take the short all right everybody wanted to take the short so let's just say like this was at this time you came here and you know this was your key area of interest. First of all, try not to trade reversals, but if you do it, it's cool, whatever. I'm just trying to teach you how you can use the Forex sentiment in your advantage. Say this was your key area, right? This was the area you have drawn on and you want to take a short, but you come here and you see that 92% of traders are already going short. So there's two things you can do here. Two things that I would do, all right? You can do it if you want or not, but this is what I would do here. This is what I would do. This is what I've been doing. And trust me, man, I've been getting results with this. Um, 
There's two things I do here. Number one, if I want to take this short, I just don't take it. I don't take it unless I can see some of these people get taken out. And then I see a, a huge rejection candle breaking structure to the downside on the lower time frames, things like that. But number one, you can prevent yourself from getting trapped. So the first thing is, you know, do not enter the trade. Okay. So do not enter the trade. That's uh, it's, it's pretty much, you know, one good thing for you that you, you know, it, it helped you with. You didn't enter the trade. Option number two, you can always do this. Knowing that majority of people are taking a short here, you can see it. And I actually do this. I did this with the last challenge. I just passed actually. Um, knowing that majority of the traders are short right here. So yeah, uh, majority of the people are taking a short right here. You already know that. You can see that there's liquidity sitting up there. You can make uh, you can make the decision of number one right here. Don't enter the trade. Number two right here. What you can do is enter the trade. Um, you know, enter the trade the opposite way. Okay. Uh, so what I mean by that basically is now you have two options. When you have a clear point of interest like this, okay, clear point of interest. Uh, number one, don't enter the trade knowing that you're gonna get stopped out. Number two, if you want to be a little risky and you know, you're going to find your own groove to this man. Once you get the hold of this, you're going to like find your own little like tactical groove to this. If, 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 if that's the correct way of saying it, um, what you can do basically in a situation like this is if you're like a support and resistance trader, or if you're like a sub, sub like we three trade supply and demand, you know, you can draw like a demand area down here, or even like, you know, you can just move, you can just consider this, like this whole area as a, I don't know. Let's just make this like a demand and a little bit of a support area, right? You draw a key support resistance or order block or whatever you want to do. You know, we draw supply and demand, draw that out, knowing that majority of the people are going short because when the market, what the market will do is it will not break this lower, this structure here, because if the market breaks this structure, then we are going to confirm go down. Like we're going to go short. So you can wait for the market to come down to this area, even here You can take the trade as soon as here. And, and you don't even need to get good risk to reward on these trades. You can just go for a simple, like, honestly, you could go for a one to two here and it will probably just push down into that area. Everybody's going short at this point. Uh, well, okay. So I guess it was like this, this area. Um, so again, you have to find the, you have to find structure, right? This is the structure that I would have probably drawn and I always wait for the lower one to get tapped. But you know, if you had one drawn here as a demand level, because this did break structure, um, you know, this could have been a trade that you could have taken. So, uh, so on number two, two takeaways, number one, prevent yourself from entering the wrong trade and getting stopped out. Uh, and the second thing that you can do is you can enter the trade the opposite way, going the opposite direction of what retail traders are doing at the current moment. Um, and, and you know, you can basically enter a trade here and make some money, get a one to two, one to three, a one to one sometimes are so easy going the counter way. All right. So number two of what we talked about is, uh, you know, how to use the Forex sentiment to better your strategy or get into winning trades or not get stopped out in trades. All right. So if you need to come back to this part of the video, come back to this part of the video and watch it again. And you're going to have, again, you have to find your own groove to this man. Like I tell all my members, you got to try this out yourself. Go like put the work in, spend 30 days. Anytime you take a trade, go look at the Forex sentiment, watch it, you know, watch your entries, watch market structure on lower time frames, things like that. All right, let's move on to number three. What percentage of the sentiment sentiment I feel makes a major difference to a trade? And what I mean by that, what I mean by that is what we just talked about where we looked at, I think Euro AUD. If, 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 if 49% of people are short and 51% of people are long, it, it, this makes zero difference of how you trade at this point. Okay. Even if we're in a situation of maybe 65 to 35 split. Okay. Uh, even a split like this won't make much of a difference and I won't pay too much attention to it. Something like this will pay attention. So I've made one rule of thumb for me. Uh, and, and I'll put it somewhere up on the screen is a, is a 80, 20 split. Okay. Which means, uh, if 80%, this is a perfect example of UJ and why I actually got out of this trade. I entered this trade right here. It matched my entry criteria. Uh, but because I've been following the Forex sentiment tool to the T, I just exited the trade right here. Uh, and I think I called this in the free channel as well. And I told them, told everybody to exit on this, uh, because this is doing a perfect 80, 20 split. Okay. It says, it says 79, but 80% retail traders are short, 20% are long. Okay. 
there's a much there's a really good chance that we're gonna like you're, you're gonna get stopped out if you're short so the rule of thumb that i'm kind of sticking to is if 80 percent of traders are doing a certain thing i don't want to do it that way okay but i would love uh because so like look look on aud cat right 80 percent of traders are long and only 20 percent are short so if i'm on aud cad number one i can almost certainly say it's in a downtrend which it is look uh this is like the best honestly the best trades that i find are these trades the market is in a downtrend we should be trading with the trend majority of traders are trying to trade reversal so they think aud cad has bottomed out and they're trying to take the long all right over here aud cad 80 percent of traders are long it's simple just keep trading with the trend knowing that majority of the traders are trying to go long so us as supply and demand traders, you know, we would have a t whatever demand area here or here. Uh, and you can, you, it looks like this, this, this trade is already kind of played out. Okay. It pretty much looks like this trade is actually already played out. Um, so yeah, you can use this to your benefit by going, okay, uh, I'm looking at AUD CAD um, and the trend is short. Perfect. You just found the perfect trade. You found a, a pair that's trending. Uh, you found a way to trade that trending pair. And now you have an extra confirmation on the Forex sentiment tool telling you that majority of people are going long. Guess what? Majority of these people are going to get destroyed. But now you can take a short up in this area. You could have probably taken one right here. Uh, so if you, if, yeah, as supply and demand, this would have been a, a four hour demand zone. This would have been a perfect, a perfect area to actually enter. Uh, and look how beautiful that was. I, and I'm pretty sure the target getting these people taken out will probably happen. These people will probably get taken out. So you can use this to your advantage by, you know, when you do enter, you know, you can take your, you can go for this area as a take profit because this is where majority of the people went long from, or they went long from here. You can try to aim for something like this. So, uh, on the third note, you know, what percentages we're looking at, uh, it's, it's always keep it at an 80, 20 split. If it's any different, you know, get a feel for what you think. Sometimes even 75% makes a difference to me. All right. With that being covered, let's go to number four. How to enter a trade even if we are trading with the sentiment. What does that mean? That means like for me, all right, for me, I wanted to take this trade on UJ, right? USD Japan, I want to take this trade. But the Forex sentiment is telling me that 80% of people are short, 21% people, 21 of people are long. How can I take the trade even, uh, even when this is happening, right? The only condition that I'm going to now take this trade in is... I know that majority of people's stop losses are sitting here. If I can watch the market push up in here, leave a wick, some kind of a wick, and then on the lower time frame start breaking structure like this, I will then enter the trade even though over here it hasn't like calculated yet. Because sometimes what will happen is this will happen so quickly within a couple of hours that this tool will not have the capacity to update how many people have been taken out of the market. But that's when you, you know, you as a trader, you get better over time. Uh, and I've gotten pretty good at like seeing when people get taken out or getting a good understanding of when I think people are getting taken out and then entering. And those are some of the best trades, man. When you see people like when you know stop losses have just been hit and we know market direction is to the downside, there's already liquidity I have drawn out. You know, that's when some of the best trades happen. So the fourth point was how do you enter when you want to take a short, but everybody's taking a short is you wait for everybody to get stopped out, taken out. You, you wait for a wick to, you know, get thrown up in there. You know, people have just been stopped out and you can, you know, look for break of structure on the five minute time frame for your entries or however you enter. That's up to you. But my job was basically to show you guys what the Forex sentiment tool is how it works, how I use it, how I've used it recently. And it's honestly made a difference in my trading and some of my students trading. Um, I'm really proud of some people that are actually been using it. They've been sending me results. So I thought this would bring some value. Um, if you like the video, please hit the like button, subscribe. We've got some amazing content coming for this channel. I um, hope you guys enjoy the video, man. Have a wonderful day.